Hello and welcome back to Planescape Tournament Enhanced Edition with me, Barden. The name is one, Dakon, Anna and Mort. So we're still here um, in the brothel and... Um, Balance in all your path is mine. Nenny said go talk to... Which one? Which is the one? No, not her. She's in the next room, isn't it? Um, Kamaxi, is that her name? Not you. Yeah, you. About the missing... That maybe she's taken the stuff. I still think that was creepy, Mac Creeperson. Because he's talking about having women's, you know, underwear and how they smell and stuff. So. And like just a scent and a veil missing. Well, here you are, looking ugly as ever. Back from some more Kamaxi abuse, eh? No, I just had some questions. Tiffany rolls her eyes, and what makes you think I care? Well, you seem to like the taste of waffle. Okay, so I guess you have to go through this. Kiss me, she makes a retching sound. I'd rather kiss a bloody mass of phlegm than lay my lips on you. No thanks. Don't thank me, thank the power power is someone actually wants to kiss you. Smaxi looks at a loss for something to say. For an instant, a smile threatens to crack the grimace, grimacing mask on her face. Then she becomes more of a maskless than ever. Alright, what do you want of me? Questions answered. Okay, so we did have to do that. I was told you were sneaking away from Marissa's chambers recently. Is that connected with her missing veil somehow? Kamaxi flies into rage. Who told you that? She suddenly falls silent, glaring at you through narrow eyes. If I was there, Burke, I didn't take her filthy veil. Search my room, if you'd like. I catch you sniffing at my britches, though. I see to it you'll never, you're never allowed in here again. Where did anyone ever sniff at your britches? Journal. Beats me. Someone nicked more than a few pairs of them, though. My favourite leather brazier, too. With the iron studs, she humps angry. Hmm, I had another question. I've spoken to nine prostitutes altogether. Do you know who or where the tenth student is? Yes, she's hiding under my bed. Go ahead, get down on all fours and check. I shan't kick you, really. <laughs> Never mind and farewell. All right. Okay, so where's Nanny? Cause she told us that it was her, but um, we're being told that it, someone else had done it. But Nanny seems to know what this. There's Echo. There we go. Nenny nine eyes, you see everything. Well met, good sir, I'm Nenny. And how are you this fine... Oh, we've met before. Nenny giggles and smiles gleefully at you. I'm sorry, I knew you looked familiar though. That's alright, Nenny. I had some questions. Please ask. Kismaxi said someone's been taking things from her room too. Have you seen anything odd? Updated my journal. Nanny's eyes suddenly go wide. Oh, that's right. You know, once I saw a man sneaking out of Kamaxi's room while she was out talking to a patron. I watched the front door all, all that day, but he never ever left. Isn't that odd? I don't think he could have made it out, of, out the window, and so I never figured out where he went. And then I totally forgot about it. Weird, huh? It is weird, but I think we know I'm gone. why. It's you, you git. Let's go and confront him. Maybe have enough evidence now to accuse him. This is Lewis the Talking Armour. Show more. I've spoken to nine prostitutes altogether. Do you know who, who and where the tenth student is? There's no tenth student. What is this rubbish you speak of? Nanny told me she saw a man leaving Kimaxi's, Kimaxi's Adderton's room. 
I think that was you, Lewis. You think, think, how could you be so alarmingly rude, so ludicrously presumptuous as to spout forth such an accusation without being absolutely certain of your charges? How dare you, impertinent brassy cur, why I ought to, as Lewis rails and curses, his drawers open and close, you notice a small bundle of crimson cloth tucked alongside him with some clothes. The repeated opening and closing of their armoured drawers make it difficult to grab, however. Let's wait for an opportunity to grab it. You stand poised at the edge of the armoire. It keeps grabbing, gabbing on and on, but it never seems to stay open long enough for you to grab the cloth. Let's try and snap your hand in while the drawer is open. You simply cannot move your hand quickly enough to snatch the crimson cloth from within Lewis. The most you could accomplish would be getting your fingers crossed. Let's, um, which one should we do? Let's try begging and whining, see what it does. Oh, please stop that rubbish. It's quite tiresome and transcends all known means of the word boring. Okay, so it's annoying. So let's do it again. Stop. How tediously dull. You're making me quite drowsy. Yarmar yawns, exposing the crimson cloth where it rests snugly beside some undergarments. You dart your hand in and seize it before the drawer can close itself. Tucking it away, you notice that it is perfumed with a light, exotic, and most pleasant fragrance. Damn it, you rogue, blackguard, scoundrel. You give that back this instant. That's not yours. This is an exceedingly personal garment that belongs to a lady of this establishment, and they would not appreciate you fronting their private things. Oh, but it's all right for you, you wooden pervert. I'm not doing anything so criminal and malicious as you. I'm merely soaking in sensations, necessary to my growth as an individual. Yes, yes, farewell, Lewis. Okay, so let's go give stuff back to people. So first of all, uh, Dolora, I think we have your scent. Dolores, oh, it's not Dolores, is it? She's the one that needs the key. Who's then that needed the scent? Not you. It's one of the ones walking around though. It's definitely isn't you. Um, let's go around this one. Okay, is it Kasai? Maybe. Kasai smiles warmly as you draw near. Pushing a wavy lock of hair away from her bright crimson eyes, well, greetings once again. Something I can do for you? No, she's the dream lady. Vivian. Ah, it's Vivian, isn't it? Oh, um, Vivian greets you with a polite smile. Have you had any luck in finding my scent? Yes, I found it. In this red veil. Updated my journal. Vivian's eyes light up. Oh, how simply wonderful. She takes the veil from your hands, mutters a few words over it, and returns it to you. She shakes out her crimson hair, and in moments, you are surrounded by the most intensely exotic and arousing scent you have ever had the pleasure of smelling. That smells great. It does, doesn't it? She smiles at you. And as you have done a favour for me, so I wish to perform one for you. Stand close to me, scarred one. Let's approach her. You step closer to Vivian. She takes your hand and turning it over takes a single cautious sniff of your wrist. Phew! She wrinkles her nose. Vinegar or embalming fluid. Here, I remove the smell from you. She mutters a few strange syllables and a light tingling sensation spread, spreads um, over your skin. In moments, your chemical reek lessens substantially. There. How is that? People should be less eager to avoid conversation with you now. Thanks, Vivian. Farewell. the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. Cool. Uh, so he's leveled up and we got Charisma plus one. Okay, well let's do his level up. 
So spell memorization's abilities have increased. Good. One hit point gained. One hit point gained from con bonus. Okay, that's good. All right. Let's move on. So we need to go over here and talk to this lady. What was it, Marissa? Yeah, Marissa, we found your veil. Don't kill us. Marissa's cold, cruel voice hisses out of the darkness. It returns. You have a reason for coming this time, I trust? Or just more of your pointless questions? Actually, I brought your crimson veil. Then would you please hand it over? Of course, here you are. My journal. You hold the crimson veil before you and feel her take it from your hands. Ah, yes, much better. Two shining points of red light appear before you as she opens her eyes. So that's what you look like. Perhaps I would have been better off with my eyes shut. Watch that forked tongue of yours, Marissa. Do not, do not get me even started. I have a question. Why do you remain behind the screen? Marissa is silent for a time before answering. At first it was because I lost my crimson veil, but now I do not know. Perhaps I have grown accustomed to dealing with my patrons in this manner and have grown to enjoy it. In time I imagine I will tire of it and venture out into sig Sigil once more. But for now, I am comfortable here. Why is it so dark in here? This is silent for time. Uh, oh, so that's going to be the same thing. I've talking. I've spoken to nine prostitutes altogether. Do you know who or where the ninth, tenth student is? I spend much time here in my chambers, but I think that even I would know. Had a tenth student arrived. There is none currently. Okay, that's all I wish to know. Farewell. Okay, so we sorted things I'm out gone. for her. Now we've got to go um, talk to. So we saw a guy Montague. So we have to go talk to him. And we still need to figure out how to um, get. What was the guy's name? Merryman to forget. All right. But I think we'll have to explore a bit more before we do do that for him. Okay, we can't interrupt the old poet. He really isn't like that. Let's pop in here. Though. Okay, Montague friend, we're coming for you. Now, he was hanging out here the last time we saw him. Okay, he's not there anymore though. Ah, here he is, Montague. This handsome young man seems lost in thought, his brow furrowed and a slight frown upon his lips. Greetings. And to thee, sir, hail. What dost thou wish of me? Are you Montague? I need to speak to you about Juliet. Oh, he gives you a puzzled, slightly suspicious look. I demand her love and demand that you withdraw your false protestations of love before I mash you into tiny bits. Thou love her so that Thou wouldst fight me? Yes. He studies you for a moment. Thou art passionate about this matter, I see. Passion stems from love. Thou love her, and I could not deny her a love such as thine. I shall from this moment onward hold no claim on her. Thou may do as thou wish. Hold a moment, this was all a ruse. A ruse? Of what sort? She wanted to provoke you into fighting for her. Oh, did she think my love so boundless that I will engage in fisticuffs with a brutally scarred man of thy stature? Perhaps she thinks my devotion to her a little high. So, what should be done about this ruse? Uh, turn around is fair play. I say ignore the chit. Act distant and unconcerned, that'll spice things up considerably. Truly? Trust me, kid, 
start ignoring her, create some friction, leave them wandering, and they'll be clawing all over to discover what the matter is. Right, Chief? Um, I'm not sure whether it's a good idea, but maybe game logic. Yes, you think something's wrong, and for once, he'll be playing the game rather than being the target. I I like the sound of that very much. Good luck. I hope it all works out. Farewell. And a farewell to thee as well, sir. Now, I have some things to attend to. Should we meet again, we might speak more of the matter. Montague bows and turns to go. In knowing the teachings of Zerthamon, I have become stronger. Stop wow. staring at my tail, you skull. <laughs> well, he's leveled up again. My blade has changed. Oh, cool. So his blade is... Let's check his blade out then. So it's 3 to 12 slashing damage. Enchanted plus 2. Plus 2 to armor class. It's really cool. So I like I like that mechanic I'm gone. where his blade can change. Okay, so um, I think the next thing we're going to do is... Well, I want to talk to this guy first. It's clear there's something very wrong with this man, the way he lurches about, bumping into things, staring off blankly into space. As you approach him, you at last realize his plight. He's headless. The thing on his shoulders is merely a, sk a skillfully carved wooden pros prosthesis, a false head. Greetings. The headless body stops fumbling for a moment and pauses. Its hands begin to reach out, as if trying to feel exactly where you are. Uh, let, let it touch you. After a moment, his fingers brush your forearm. It clutches your arm and follows it up to your shoulder, then your head. As if, as it feels your face and head, its hands brush your neck, as if it were checking for something. Finally, it grabs your hand and shakes it vigorously in greeting. You notice that its skin is cold and slightly damp. Can you understand me? The figure makes a series of hand motions, then waits for a response. It seems like it's asking a question. What? I don't understand. The headless body taps its foot for a moment, scratching at the chin of the prosthetic head. Suddenly it raises a finger, as if struck by an idea. It points at you, then at the eyes of its wooden head, then at you again. It then indicates its wooden head with both hands, shrugs and points at you. Oh no, I haven't seen your head anywhere. The headless body shrugs, slumps a bit and turns to amble off. Okay, so we need to keep an eye out for his head, I guess. So let's explore before um, we go back. So also known as Wanker City. <laughs> let's talk to you. The smell of alcohol wafts heavily from this young woman, and despite her dark skin, you can see that her face, beautiful but cruel looking, is flushed. She's slender but well muscled, adorned in exotic jewelry and translucent silk translucent, translucent silk clothing. Numerous scars crisscross her her thighs and forearms. They look to be from battle wounds. Greetings. Well, well, what have we here? A little tiefling gutter queen. Come crawling out of the hive. The woman pouts, talking as one would to a small child. Are you lost, little tiefling? Oh, look, it has a tail. How cute. Anna flushes with a snarl. Blades sprout from her fists. Now, fiend king, don't do that. The woman seems unconcerned as Anna draws her weapons and clucks disapprovingly with her tongue. Careful now, or I'll move that tail of yours and feed it to my dogs. Enough, girl. Apologize to her or cut bits of you off. Uh, let's let Anna handle it. You have a sharp tongue on ye, wee lass. Anna spits and sharpens her blade against each other. I wonder how sweet your tacky jewels and harlot's clothing look on you when you're dead in the street. Anna, wait. You filthy spawn of the lower plains, a bitch bastard that, that even a Tanari would keep in its pain. She draws her blade. Um, what are we going to do? There's going to be a fight. I don't want to lose um, Anna. But I don't want to kind of interfere 
like as if oh she's the girl in the group so we have to protect her but I suppose it was a guy in the group we probably beat the crap out of the person altogether anyway cheat that blade girl or cheat it in your body what foul thing gave birth to you sir she grimaces in disgust then laughs harshly and such a stench be you one of death's bastards you notice a curved long knife hanging at her hip her hands rest loosely upon its pommel Want me to slap this barmy chit down, chief? No, Mort, I'll handle this. Oh, this, I've seen, I've to see. So tell me, sir, is it that you stink like the hive's gutter, or that its gutter stinks like you? Um, let's bluff. And Hannah, is that you? I love your adult way. I love your adult ways, Chief. The woman blinks at you in surprise. And Hannah, do you not remember me? She eyes you warily for a moment and smiles. Your deep wounds must have confused you, sir. The woman chuckles. I am not your friend, nor would I ever associate with one such as you. Oh, my apologies. I had taught you to be at Hannah. But you're too you're twice as ugly and smell twice as bad as she. She listens to you for a moment, confused, and snarls and makes you draw her weapon. And we'd have to fight her or call for the guards. I wonder if we can't had I been able to make this go some way differently. Let's call for the guards though. She gasps in shock. You feel you fool, are you mad? The guards would never take your word over mine. You're you're obviously drunk, and those scars of yours mark you as a fighting sword. We probably have a reputation for this sort of thing already. I think they just might. She stares hard at you, grinding her teeth. Let us drop the whole matter then, and be on our separate ways. Agreed, you've already wasted enough of my time. Farewell. All right. Well, let's go talk to this chap again. Seeing as let him know that things worked out. What did you mean by future mage tutor of the Updated festival? Updated my journal. It's a prestigious position to be an official tutor in one of the fest hall's training chambers. It's my intention to one day take the position of mage's tutor, but the title is currently in the possession of Lady Torncombe. If only I could somehow prove that I'd be sup a superior tutor. Okay. But we can't, apparently we can't help them with that. Okay. So maybe that will unlock later. Enduring, grow strong. Okay. Um, so we did see a door over here. So let's go through here. And I definitely don't want to go down there. Harlot. Hang on, who are you? Mal Manor. This thin, sharp-faced man rushes towards you, calling your attention. Ah, sir, sir, but a moment of your time. Were you perchance here to visit the tailor? I... W the man breaks in. I asked, sir, because I seem to have uh, offended the man. I had commissioned the hot-blooded fool to make me a costume, but he's thrown me out of his shop and will not, will not speak with me. So what... The man suddenly balls his fists and shakes them at the sky. What have I done to deserve such treatment? Nothing, I say. I was a patron. It is his duty to serve me, that churlish buffoon. What did you want from me? Uh, he focused on you going, Oh yes, you. Could I beg of you to enter the place and fetch my costume for me, sir? I'm a, I've a masquerade to go to and have not the time to commission another tailor. Yes, I'll go get it now. My journal. Oh, most excellent, sir. Tis this very building right here. He points to the long, low structure just north of him. I thank you, sir. Farewell. So, um, I guess we are going in here then. Okay, citizen, citizen. He's the tailor. All right. Let's just walk around to uncover anything else that we can see. Okay, and then let's talk to you. To me, gun pals. This short, heavy-set, middle-aged man is wearing clothes that seem to be spun of glittering gold. In his hands, he holds a bolt of cloth, strung taut against a wooden frame. He is currently embroidered 
writing some patterns into the fabric. Greetings. Actually, um, yeah, let's finish this up. The man doesn't seem to acknowledge your presence. He continues to work at his embroidery, muttering under his breath. As he sews, shimmering motes of light seem to sparkle and drop from the tip of the needles. Good sir, do you hear me? The man does not look up from his work, frowning distastefully as he answers you. Yes, yes, and I am certain that what you need is truly quite urgent. Now, if you could be silent for just a moment. Okay, let's wait quietly. At last, he sets down the embroidery and looks up at you. Before you can speak, however, he suddenly picks up another item and sets to work on it. Again, as he works, what looks to be tiny colored sparks drip from the fabric. Um, let's wait some more. He finally finishes his work, setting it down to examine you. Greetings, I am gone, Carls. Now, what was it you were here to see me about? Hmm, I hope it is about garments and the like. I shan't answer anything not concerning myself the sore, you know. What were those lights while you were embroidering? That? Oh, nothing, sir, but a bit of the art, which I at times weave into fabric when the fancy strikes me. Those items which I lavish enchantments upon are my most special creations and are rarely sold. What sort of magical clothes do you have available? Gonclaves looks you over, frowning. Nothing that would fit you, that is for certain. I'd like to see what you you've to offer just the same. Okay, so she could wear either of those. He can't wear he shouldn't be able to wear anything. Okay, so Jerkin of the Brazen Rogue and Jerkin of the Flitting Shadow. So what does this do? Our class four okay Hour class 6, plus 15 pickpocket skills, plus 25 stealth skill bonds. Use it only by Anna. Use it only by Anna. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll buy that one then. Okay, and then uh, Anna will equip it. What does our other one do? Armor class 8, weight 10. Okay, um, now let's get this thing finished. I had questions. Um, I wanted to pick up a dustman costume. You are in luck then, sir. I happen to have one available. It's co it costs us 30 coppers. I'll take it. Gonclay takes a set of neatly folded robes from under a counter. Here you are, sir. I would warn you, though, if it is for the upcoming masquerade of Lord Erd, Many folks are already attending as dustmen. I'll keep that in mind. Farewell, Gonclave, Cavs. Okay, let's um, head on out. So we have to tell this guy, your costume isn't original. The man looks at you expectantly. Well, well, did you get the costume from Gonclaves? Yes, here it is. It cost me 30 commons. Updated my journal. Fine, fine, take it here. He tosses you 30 copper commas. Now, I have to be off. Wait, uh, Gonkav said many people were already going to this masquerade of dustmen. Did he? Blast! I would hate to arrive in such a common costume. Hmm. I could go see if he has another ready. Not a bad idea, not bad at all. Quickly, see if that portly nincompoop has another one, would you? He's a bit of a dick, so I'm going to say I will, but it'll cost you. He rolls his eyes, sneering at you. I should have figured. Here, you mercenary. This will be enough, I trust. He hands you 20 copper commons. That'll do. I'll return Updated with another costume. Journal. Normally I wouldn't do that, but he was being a dick, so... Like, obviously, there's a reason why he got kicked out of the store. Gonclay set down something as he works. Uh, he was working on and nods to you. You come again, sir. Good. What can I help you with? I wanted to pick up another different costume. Gonclay nods and smiles knowingly. The dustman bit seems a bit too common after all, eh? Well, it just so happens that I have a godsman costume. If you would like, it shall cost you only 50 coppers. I'll take it. 
Gonclave retrieves a set of folded clothing and a heavy leather apron and work boots from under a counter. Here you are, sir. Enjoy the masquerade. Thank you, Gon Calves. Farewell. Okay. Let's go tell him it was a thousand copper or wherever we can. Because he's a dick. The man looks at you expecting. Well, well, did you get the costume? Yes, here it is. It cost me 50. But I don't want to be a liar. Okay, we've already taken one Updated extra my money from so Yes, he does. He makes a disgusted noise, snatching the costume from you, shows 50 coins in your hand. Now I'll be off. Yeah, what a fucking dick. Farewell. And it's farewell from us too. So from that dick that ran away, wherever his name was, I don't really care. Um, myself, Barden. The nameless one, Dakon, Anna and Mort. And the harlot who's standing close by to us as well. It's goodbye. And we really do hope to see all of you next time. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.